evening, sir. Hello, could I have a gin and tonic, please? Thank you. With ice and lemon? Yes, please. Thank you. Yeah. Now, how many times have you done that? Order a gin and tonic, but are you getting one? Well, you'd be surprised. One of the commonest tricks in bars these days is to dip the rim of the glass in a saucer of gin and then fill it up with tonic only. It smells like a G&T and it's almost impossible to tell the difference, especially if you've had a few. The price of a gin and tonic, 82 pence, thank you. The price of a tonic, 27. So every time that particular fiddle is worked, 55 pence goes straight into the bomb's pocket. Restaurants, too, are notorious for their fiddles. For example, I've just ordered a carafe of house wine, but how do I know that's not made up from the leftovers of other customers' bottles? And often, the vegetables that end up on your plate are only a fraction of those you've actually paid for, so where are the rest? Waiters will frequently encourage you to go for the roast because that's served in the restaurant and there's no check on how many portions should be accounted for. Another fiddle that's often worked on the unsuspecting housewife is the checkout con, where the girl on the till rings up less than the proper price, puts the difference into a separate part of the till and later pockets it. Very few customers ask for their ticket, and if they do, they're told, well, it's on the floor somewhere. Well, there are only a few in a whole catalogue of fiddles being worked by thousands of people at all levels of society, from the boardroom to the bakery. Everyone from the city tycoon to the car dealer is trying to bend the rules to boost his bank balance. And in the twilight world of the black economy, it's often very difficult to work out where a perk ends and where a fiddle begins, where tax avoidance, which is legal, becomes tax evasion, which certainly isn't. Now, it's estimated in Britain the black economy accounts for a staggering £15,000 million a year. And of that, the Inland Revenue reckon they're losing £4,000 million in lost tax. That, in turn, means a bigger burden for the rest of us. Len, who's heavily disguised here for obvious reasons, is typical of hundreds, maybe thousands, of small businessmen who beat the tax man. He makes and sells ceramic bric-a-brac, but only part of the family business is legitimate. The rest, £10,000 worth, is black, cash in hand, nothing in writing. The Inland Revenue would love to get their hands on him, but he reckons he's no different from anyone else. I would suggest that the bulk of the population fiddles something. It's part of the social fabric of Britain, I'd say. Everybody's at it. I heard a report about it being 90%, and I'd say that's totally inaccurate. In my view, it's 100%. You enjoy cheating the system for the sake of cheating it? I like the idea that I'm more in charge of the money that I earn, yes. If it didn't work this way, not only my business, but lots of other small businesses would go under. If they had to pay the full taxation levies, then I don't think lots of the businesses I know could possibly survive. And this would lead, in my view, to an increase in unemployment. <laughs> As far as I'm concerned, the system is, I suppose, threefold. The first is the purchase of materials, where I go along to, say, a warehouse and order a couple of bags of stuff, a couple of items, so that on my records I'm buying raw materials. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Hello. Well, me. I'd like a box of that, please. Yeah. And one box of that. OK. Can you put them on my account, please? Sure, yeah. That's 17 Everything above board so far, but that's where the legitimate part of the deal finishes. What Len really came for is worth a lot more than the £17.50 uh, that's been chalked up to his account. One of them. It's a well-practiced routine. I'd like a bag of that as well. Right, OK. A nice little backhander to the storeman. Len gets his £100 worth of material, which never sees the books, and the storeman becomes a partner in crime. What's part two, then? Part two is the way that I pay my employees. For example, with one who has four children, the family income supplement level is £109. The government will give him half the difference between family income supplement and what I give him, so he gets another £24 odd a week, and then I give him a bonus from our cash takings of £10 a week and I allow him to use my petrol account at the garage and he gets £5 a week. 
In addition to that, he gets all of his school meals free for his kids. He gets free dental treatment, free prescriptions and everything else. So all in all, he ends up with over £100 cash. He's not bothered where the money comes from. He couldn't care less if I go to the bank and withdraw over £100 and give it to him or whether I give him £60 and he ends up with 40-odd quid from another source. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. See you next week. Thank you. Part three is the way that I actually sell some of the production and I deal not only in cash but also in goods where they've got what I want and I've got what they want or I swap it for cash where the shop or the stall, whoever I exchange it with, pays me in cash. They don't want any record and I don't want any record. Supposing you're doing the deal, how do you know the person at the other end is to be trusted? You might have heard about them from somebody who you know, who says if you deal with that shop, you know, they'll pay you cash. Or if you haven't heard about them, you might well wander in the shop and talk to the shopkeeper and from what he says and his general sort of attitude and what you ask him, you can find out whether he's going to deal in cash or whether he's going to want it all invoiced. Come on, boys and girls, today's your lucky day. I'm not here today and gone tomorrow. I've gone today if I can get rid of all this gear. My stuff don't fall off the back of lorries if it gets taken off the back of lorries. Hello oh, there. How are you going? All right. All right, you? Yeah, fine. I brought you some stuff. Oh, yeah. Let's I said I'd bring it you last week. Yeah, let's have a look. There you are. Oh, they're all right, aren't they? I said I'd come and show you these, so yeah. I brought you some along. How much are you knocking them out for? 50p each to you. Oh, there you go. I might be able to shift it for you. How many can you get? I've only brought you two dozen this week to see how they go. Yeah, well, you can get more, can't you? I can bring you hundreds, say, next oh, week. Oh, fine, yeah. Right, great. That's going to cost me what? 12 quid? It'll cost you 12 quid, that's right. There you go, then, cop. Thanks very much. All right. So we'll see you next week, then. See All you right. next week. Fine. Come on, ladies and gentlemen, a new line today. A new line today, 75 pence a piece. Come on, you can't go wrong at that. You can throw them at the old man when he comes home drunk. Do what you like with them. So what do you do?